it has been a while uh, since an update, and that is because um, Christina and I have moved to a new house. I'm still building um, my office, so eventually videos will be done up there, but right now I'm in the middle of drywalling and building some walls and what's not. So it's just messy, and this is what we got. Um, there's two uh, occasions, really, that make me want to make this update beyond the fact that it's been uh, a while. The first is that Pathios.com, which is a great place for uh, mainline Christians and, and other folks to kind of engage their spirituality online and kind of network with some nodes and stuff, asked me earlier this week, um, or last week, if I would contribute to a little uh, mini blogging article they're doing about the Holy Spirit. And I said yes. So uh, I'll be linking to the Pathios blog, and I'd love for folks to take a look and read at what I wrote and what some of the other um, online bloggers wrote about the Holy Spirit. I think that that's a really cool project that they do, getting lots of voices to speak to that. So I wrote um, a little piece of poetry or edited some poetry that reflects the question, how is the Holy Spirit working in the world? I would love to see your comments over there. The second piece, also related to the Holy Spirit, um, has to do with um, what folks have been talking about some other places, specifically kind of on Phil Wyman's blog, Four Square No More, um, about something that happened at the Transform Gathering. And um, for folks who are looking for more in-depth uh, interest in that, why don't you go take a look at Phil's blog. That's going to be linked beneath below. It's a pretty detailed description of what went down. But the, the thumbnail of it is this, that uh, at one of the evenings at the um, the Transform Gathering in D.C., there was some really powerful ministry um, that was offered through Amy Moffat and uh, the Reverend Vince, and they were singing some music that was really just powerful. And, and my experience of that moment was that there was some kind of um, catalytic transformation that happened, and we, we were visited by this moment of the inbreaking of the kingdom. Now, that language might be unfamiliar with you depending on your background, but for our tradition, the Religious Society of Friends, and for some Pentecostals, the language we would have, the Christian language, is that for some moment the Holy Spirit descended on us. Now, does that mean that there were tongues of flame like in the Pentecost or that everyone was speaking this and the tongues was happening? No, not that I saw, but there was this feeling, this, this actual experiential, palpable, visceral feeling that something had happened, that because of the faithfulness and the giving over um, of these two ministers of, of Vince and Amy, that something had happened and we were able to experience a little bit of a moment that was powerful and charged and somehow more than just the collection of the parts. Now, there's all sorts of ways to discuss that. That's how I discuss it. My tradition calls that an inbreaking of the kingdom of God. And what happened was I, I, I rose and from a socially secular place, probably in a rude way, I said to everyone, uh, can we just stop and acknowledge that God's presence was in the room? Now, of course that's awkward and, and uh, difficult and rude in secular situations. I mean, who am I? I'm not in charge. I was just sitting in the audience. It was compounded by the fact that not everyone could hear me. Um, and the back and forth around that has really led me to some, some thoughts about it. Because not everyone's religious tradition has an experience of the Holy Spirit where we acknowledge it as an actual thing that like happens and needs to be broken into. And it seems like part of what is on the table here, and I'd be interested in hearing what other folks think about it, is that in my tradition, the Holy Spirit is continually breaking apart um, human systems that are not quite put together correctly, perfectly. And unfortunately, or, or maybe just um, therefore, most human systems aren't ever going to be put together perfectly. So there are moments when we need to take pause, when we need to hold on a moment, and not have our scheduled human chronological time be what drives us, but instead allow for those experiences to kind of stop us from our human time and allow us to have a tiny taste of that moment of kairos time, kairosological time, and allow ourselves to just experience what it is that this Holy Spirit thing is about, what it is that the kingdom of God is about. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone needs to worship the way that Quakers worship or that what I do is in fact the best way. But there's an interesting dialogue, I think, that can happen. What is this Holy Spirit? Jesus, I mean, Jesus we have some sense of, whether scripturally or historically or with the experience of the personal Jesus. Some people have that. And God is the Godhead. There's all sorts of systematic theologies to explain that. But, but the pneumatology, the thinking about how it is that the Holy Spirit works in the world, 
Well, that's still a, a little up in the air, right? And Tony Jones has been writing about it a little bit over his blog. I'll link that below. Uh, Sam Lawrence just met from Drew University, trying to do some cool stuff with that. I just found out that uh, Sarah uh, Walker Cleveland is also doing some stuff with that. I'll show you a, a link to her some of her stuff. So there's all sorts of people who are thinking about pneumatology and the Holy Spirit and what it does. But there's also this question where like, but how do we know? Can't we have a systematic about the Holy Spirit? And what I would posit is no, we can't. It's just like trying to define art and so we understand how art works all the time. We understand how artists are and we understand where creativity comes from. We can have a taste of it. We can have a sense of it. But I think, and, I'm, and blessedly so, that the Holy Spirit is not something we're going to rein in. It's not something that we're going to be able to develop a firm systematic for, that we're going to be able to know in every situation how it is the Holy Spirit's going to function. It seems as if that divine presence, that inbreaking of God, that Holy Spirit, is something that is meant to disrupt our human activities, to allow us to acknowledge and embrace the grace that we've been given, and that these, these human things, these, these fleshly things, are absolutely what our experience is made of, and through them we can experience the divine. And if we keep on our track, um, we don't always take the time to experience that. So my invitation would be that um, we treat the world as a beautiful uh, kind of canvas or, or page upon which a poem is constantly being written, and as that we enter into the world, that there be moments when there's just this, oh, wow, moment, and we acknowledge it. We take the time to say, that was powerful and profound. God is at work in the world, just like we might if we were in a museum or at a reading, because in fact, we are at a museum or a reading. It is this world, and God is at work. Um, so I would invite people to consider whether there's a place for that in their lives. And I would also invite all sorts of folks, theologians and women and men who are thinking about how it is the Spirit works in the world, to dialogue, to share their experience about how it is the Holy Spirit works. Because it's something that's mysterious, yes, completely attainable, no, but there is something to be learned in the talking of it. At least, that's what I think. Lots of links below. Um, Holy Spirit, here we come.